The diencephalon is the central core of the brain that consists of the thalamus and the hypothalamus. The thalamus sends impulses from the senses, sorts them, and then sends them to the correct region of the brain. This plays a key role in interpreting sensation, motor activities, learning, and memory. So a good way to think of the thalamus is like the traffic cop. Sensory information comes in and it's the thalamus that determines where that is going to be sent in the brain. The hypothalamus is located just below the thalamus and connects to the pituitary gland. The hypothalamus is functioning in a lot of regulation. It regulates blood pressure and heartbeat, breathing, body temperature, hunger and thirst, daily cycles along with sleep, hormone release, and emotional responses, such as the feelings of pleasure, fear, and rage. So regulation is one of the key jobs of the hypothalamus. The limbic system. The limbic system is involved in motivation, emotion, learning, memory, and the reinforcement of behavior. It influences the endocrine system, which has to do with your hormones, as well as the autonomic nervous system, which we'll talk more about um, a little later in the unit. The autonomic nervous system has to do with functions that you do not consciously control. The limbic system involves a couple of different structures. It includes the prefrontal cortex, which is responsible for rational thought. The prefrontal cortex does not fully mature until about age 25. The limbic system also involves the amygdala. The amygdala processes memories, is involved in decision making and emotional responses, especially responses that have to do with fear, anxiety, and aggression. Now, since the prefrontal cortex doesn't mature until age 25, that means a lot of rational thought doesn't occur until you're older. And that's why a lot of decision making in adolescents and teens are often emotional decisions rather than decisions based on rational thought, because the part of their brain responsible for rational thought isn't fully developed. The hippocampus is also part of the limbic system. This helps to consolidate information from short to long-term memory. So it's involved in learning as well as spatial navigation and behavior inhibition. Alzheimer's disease, it's thought that the hippocampus is one of the first brain regions that's affected. And that's why there is oftentimes a lot of short-term memory loss in Alzheimer's disease, as well as disorientation. You may have heard on the news that sometimes there are missing individuals who have had Alzheimer's that seem to have just wandered away. And that probably is due to some of that spatial navigation that the hippocampus is responsible for. So now moving on to a different section of the brain, the cerebellum. This is located under the cerebral occipital lobes, and this is under subconscious control. The cerebellum provides precise timing and appropriate patterns of skeletal muscle contraction. So this is what gives us smooth, coordinated movements. It helps us function in terms of balance and equilibrium and gives us a sense of our body position. Studies have also shown that the cerebellum has some cognitive functions, that it is involved in problem solving, 
recognizing and predicting sequences of events, and it plays a role in motor learning or learning that has to do with movement and action. The brainstem controls automatic behaviors necessary for survival. It connects to the spinal cord and consists of three regions, the midbrain, the pons, and the medulla oblongata. Make sure that you understand the difference between what the brainstem does and what the hypothalamus does. The brainstem is controlling these automatic necessary behaviors. So the brainstem determines whether or not your heart is pumping, whether or not you're breathing where the hypothalamus is going to regulate that. How fast is your heart beating? How fast are you breathing? So one is controlling and one is regulating. And here is just showing you the divisions of where the midbrain, the pons, and the medulla oblongata are in the brainstem. Chiari malformation has to do with the brainstem. And this is when brain tissue extends into the spinal canal. And this can be caused by an abnormally small or oddly shaped skull. And when this happens, it can block cerebral spinal fluid from traveling in and around the brain and spinal cord. There's two types. Type one is when the cerebellum sits too low. And this can cause subtle symptoms like a headache, neck pain, and scoliosis. Or type two is when the brainstem sits too low. And when this, there's a risk of it becoming compressed with the upper part of the spinal cord. And so type two is a little more serious because if that brainstem and the upper part of the spinal cord start to be compressed, it can result in trouble breathing, slow heart rate, choking, gagging, or other trouble swallowing. 